Hello. Today I'm really, really excited because for one of the animations that I'm making, uh, I'm making it with two other people, uh, we're doing it as a, a group effort, but we've been planning this animation for a long time, now comes production, and there's a shot that I've been wanting to animate for it for a long time, and I'm finally gonna get the opportunity. It is a walk cycle. I will show you what a have so far as like the planning stage to go with. The story is about a character who has post-traumatic stress disorder uh, from a very traumatic event in her past. A turning point in this animation where she realizes that the events that happened in her past were not her fault. And we've characterized the trauma and the, the post-traumatic stress disorder with this kind of red material from a burn. As she's walking, she tears off this material and the material flies off of her and she's liberated from it. I'm really excited for it. But we have a challenge and that is I need to get reference footage for the walk cycle. What I thought I would do is I would use a treadmill. It's a treadmill at my gym. So I need to try and like sneak in there with the camera because I'm pretty sure you're not allowed cameras in there and try and set up a tripod shot and get the reference footage and get out of there. I really hate filming in public. Uh, it's terribly uncomfortable, but I've got to do it. It's really nice to do this on a treadmill because the subject is in place so you can really observe everything about each component of the body. I'm just trying to get into character here and here it's more like the determined breaking free and I'm also seeing where it comes in the timing of the footsteps as well. It's going to be tricky to say the least, I might exaggerate that to be more like lean forwards because with the animation, she's going to be held back by this substance. So we can lean her forwards more into that. I was also stretching <laughs> because I felt quite stiff. For anyone walking past who's thinking, what's he doing? Just throw in a few stretches there so they think I'm stretching. I actually think that this second recording, this part of it is better for this, the beginning where she's really struggling. And then I push against that and you can really see it with the legs there. Just a walk cycle by itself is, is very difficult. Now if you add into that the multitasking that's going on where her arms are going to be doing their own thing, she's going to have her hair moving in a very cool way, there's going to be abstract effects going on, there's going to be like this, this material that's getting blown off of her. These are like at least three elements that I'm having to deal with at the same time and the other thing that's going to be very difficult about it is that I'm working to a different art style. Uh, I will link to the girl I'm, I'm working with on this. Basically we're kind of working to her art style. She has a fantastic style of character design and all of that. So we're working to that. But that's another thing on top of everything. I've got to imitate a different art style. So it's very challenging. I'll just show what I'm doing here. 
So I've just done contact poses where both feet make contact with the floor. There's a short window within a walk cycle where both feet are on the floor and that's a good starting point, I guess. And from there, I then did the other foot in the same pose, but making sure that it's not the exact same pose, but slightly different. Because if you have it is exactly the same, it doesn't quite look right. You have to vary it a little bit, so you can see how I've done that here. And from there, we then put in the one between that. I can't remember what you... There is terminology for this, but I cannot recall it. I have it written down in my notes. So here I'm drawing in the key poses for the walk cycle. And one of the things I think you should avoid when you're creating a walk cycle is pedaling. And uh, pedaling is kind of like when the feet are moving in a circular motion and it can be quite easy to fall into this trap but there are two ways that you can avoid uh, it looking like your character is pedaling. One of them is to create these lines to make sure that your character's feet are moving along a flat line and so you keep track of that line when the character's foot is down. And the other thing that you can do is to stick to those those important poses, the contact, the passing position and the recoil. Make sure that you have them in and that they're quite pr pronounced in uh, your keyframes. So if you do that, then you shouldn't have a problem with pedaling. And to link it back up, I'm going to copy and paste this frame ahead so that I have it to, uh, to onion skin. There's kind of like a snap with the legs from being like the front leg, especially from being straight to being bent and it's when it touches the ground. And the difference between those two frames create um, the, the authenticity of the walk cycle. So that's the third step I'm drawing in now. There are kind of two phases that I pass between, for me, I go back and forth between them. One is looking at the, the bigger picture, the overall feel of the pose, um, what the pose communicates from frame to frame. So one frame, look at it, what does that say in that frame, in that space in time, like a cross section of the walk cycle. And then the other one is to look at each body part individually and see what it's doing on its own, regardless of the rest of the body. Now, these are two different ways of observing a walk cycle, and I, I like to pass between them. And that's just my thought process, but that's what's kind of going on in my head. You'll notice that I'm constantly changing and tweaking different parts of it. Sometimes I, I think to myself, the leg should be straight here, and then afterwards I will go back and change it and that's just how I work um, the process in which I work basically I can't really picture what the animation looks like in my head I don't really see what I'm about to draw instead I just go with a sort of feeling of what it might be and then I will draw it I'll try it and then I'll I'll play it back to myself and I'll watch it a dozen times uh, you don't really see me playing it back and watching it a dozen times because I tend to cut that out quite a lot from these recordings because it's not very interesting to look at. I'm literally just watching it play again and again and again. It's from watching it time after time that I will analyse it and work out what I think is wrong with it. 
and then I'll go back in, I'll change some parts and I sort of move through a checklist of criteria, different things that I look for because you can't really analyze everything about it when you're doing this. So you sort of pass through a few different modes when you do it. So one of them is the proportions. Like I will just, just be checking for proportions in another analysis I might just be looking at uh, whether it feels natural uh, in another I'll be looking at like how it conveys the emotions of what the character is feeling and so on and so forth I'll just you know with each time that it loops around I'll be looking for them yeah that's that's kind of how it works some people are very different in that they will be able to fully visualize what they're looking what what they're about to draw and then they have it in their mind's eye and they draw exactly what they want and that's an amazing talent that uh you know if you if you can do that then you're very lucky but that also creates a different style of animation like if you are able to do that mentally then you you will as a consequence have a different style of animation i find this subject quite fascinating uh how the brain work uh, because people really do approach this very differently depending on how their mind works Here's where I went back to add in those first keyframes of her turning around into the walk cycle. I added to that bit by bit and eventually I got it to look right. Um, anyway, this is like coming to the end of the walk cycle. So I'm gonna show you in the recording, this is where the, um, the progress was. All right, we're on to the bit that is very interesting to me. We decided as a team that we needed to have something physical about the PTSD that would be recurring, like a, a recurring thing that would haunt her. And I put forward the idea that the thought of fire and, and, and flames, you know, flames can also be quite beautiful and quite comforting. And a new angle that we could approach this is uh, to have this recurring material of burning flesh, which uh, is a pretty horrible thing. But if we look at the effects of something like napalm, uh, it's a very disturbing thing that none of us really want to think about. But it's something that someone suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder might, that might be ingrained in their memory. That was the original idea behind this kind of material and how it latches onto her and, and won't, she won't be able to break free from it. But yeah, even then, you know, this material is sort of uh, invented by us. It's, it's got that origin in the real world. Flesh does burn and it can melt, but at the same time, it doesn't exactly behave like this. So we had to be creative with how to make this uh, animation and I actually started off with this walk cycle you know when I had to animate this stuff I just started off by tracing over the outline of the body that I had already drawn out and you know tracing it over in this thick red pen to uh, make it so she was completely covered in the stuff and from there I started look looking at the individual pieces that would be falling away and what I would recommend for anyone who wants to animate these kind of particle effects, I've animated a lot of these particle effects. They're actually a lot easier than they look. Uh, they look very difficult, they look very complex, and they are very complex, but the way you can go about animating it is to animate it one piece at a time. So each one of those little particles, I actually uh, went through the timeline and animated the entire life cycle for that one piece from start to finish. And then you go back to where you want to go on the timeline, where you want another piece to be generated, and you go through the same process again, and you animate through uh, that one from start to finish. And uh, it helps when you've got a lot of these particles to make it as efficient as possible for you to draw them. So have a nice thick brush if it's a, a globular, 
uh, circular shape like this have a nice thick brush so you just need to mark it down and so it can take you you know in in some cases even like uh, 0.1 of a second to just create a frame you've got your key on the the next frame button so you can just key through very quickly that's how I animated it here and uh, you know it was no problem really in the end uh, afterwards I went I set the brush to multiply and I shaded in these uh, these circles to give them some three-dimensional form and that really made them uh, feel a lot more real it was fairly straightforward to do that because I would just animate straight ahead each particle but that does take a lot of time because the more of those particles you have the, the you know the more you have to draw in I also messed about with the gravity a little bit so the particles would be trying to uh, resist her walking so they would when they would be broken free they would go off to the screen left uh, that was another thing that I experimented with once all of the poses had been drawn out I went onto the hair and it was so much fun. Uh, this is one of the best things about animation is that you get to, when the character is going through something nice, you can put yourself in those shoes and experience what they're experiencing. So for the hours that I was animating this hair, I just felt like the wind was rushing through my hair and uh, I was just walking free as a bird with nothing to worry about and it was lovely so yeah I really enjoyed animating this uh, this part of the walk cycle hair is one of those things that I always look forward to animating the main things that I did were just to wait until all of the animation on the body had been done because the hair uh, is directly influenced by what happens in the body particularly around the head applied the principles of uh, the ripple effects, the, the principles of flow as well and also I added some of my own uh, signature techniques onto the hair animation things like uh, I've now developed a signature technique for hair animation like this where it, um, it's kind of like a continuous spiral so it looks like the hair is spiraling around uh, the head um, instead of it being just tethered like normal and that's an effect that in hair animation you can completely get away with and it actually looks really cool and looks really mystical I actually found that out when I was animating the last time I was animating hair like this I sort of discovered that by accident and now it's like a signature that I use in my hair animations um, but yeah animating long hair like this is really satisfying uh, it was kind of difficult to quickly have the hair come back down. Uh, I kind of wanted more time for that to play out, but I was just about able to do it. So that about wraps up what I had to show you guys for this week. So I'm going to show you the current progress of where I have the walk cycle right now. I just want to let you know about a few th other things I've got going on. I have the Patreon page, which is a way for you to support the videos on this channel uh, and keep them running. Everyone that joins my Patreon really does help me to create these videos. So I appreciate all of the people who have already supported me on Patreon. I have my website, animatorguild.com. That's where you can see a whole lot more of these kind of videos, including tutorials, one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, private lessons, source files, book reviews and all sorts of things. So you can check that out. 
I'm currently working on an online course that is going to be up on Animated Guild in the new year and it's going to be all about Sakuga techniques. Sakuga is the art of, of anime basically and I'm really excited to bring that out. So keep an eye out for that. Follow me on Twitter if you'd like to receive updates on that. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.